G'day everyone and welcome back to Measure Twice Cut Once, the, uh, the show that's uh, on YouTube and also on podcast streams. Um, uh, your host for the next half an hour or so will be myself, Dirk, from Sumo's Projects on both uh, YouTube and Instagram. And uh, also like to welcome back my good friend who's had a, had a bit of a, uh, you know, time down in the mines uh, hunting for that alluvial gold treasure that he's always been after and that is the one and only Chris Zurek. G'day Chris. Yeah, g'day Dirk. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, uh, I've been looking for gold so I can buy some more tools and stuff like that. But um, no luck. No luck. I'm still going to have to work for another two and a half years. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm Chris from Built by Chris and you can catch me on um, on the podcast or you can catch me on my YouTube channel or, or Instagram and um Somewhere else. Where else can you see me, Dirk? Well, Hoss, uh, you, you can be seen in, in many places, mate, and I, I'm basically trying to work on your resume because I, I know you're an uh, international man of mystique and, and talent. So, you know, once once that retirement bell goes and, you know, you might get sick for sick of working in a workshop for, I don't know, a week or so, there's always a plan B for you to go else, go elsewhere and um, just – you know, absorb life. So, yeah, that's why I say it. You're right. Yeah, I'm, I'm either in my workshop or I'm sitting in front of my computer um, mm. editing video. That's my life. That is your life. And I yes. love it. And I love it. Nowadays, though, um, I'm either in the workshop or I'm on the computer editing video or I'm at the footy. Oh, the footy's back on, yes. The footy's back on, yep. So we're very happy about that. That's going we're not good doing too. You. No, it's it's not going too well at all. We, yeah. But actually, you know what? Let's not talk about it. Let's just just move along. Let's move along. I'm I'm just going to say, um, what a great show we had last week. We had uh, Mark Dana on the show, and yeah. uh, he turned out to be an absolutely top bloke. Now we had no doubt about that at all, did we, Dirk? I uh, would never have doubted that prior to the interview. And um, Mark, Mark's one of those extraordinary, uh, you know, talented but friendly, easy going down to earth Australians that, uh, you know, we all want to meet every Very day. Very much so. I would say he is the epitome of the uh, Aussie. He's, um, he's just a, a laid back guy. Nothing's too much drama and, no. um, and nothing's too much trouble for him. I think he's, uh, he's a really, really good bloke. We had a good talk. We had a good talk. Too right. Too right. Uh, yeah, Dirk, uh, we can sit here and talk about how great Mark Dana is for, for the next week or so, but we need to um, discuss our next topic, and that's um, timber. Is it becoming scarce? What do you think we get into that? Oh, I think so, Chris. I think it's a very, very uh, good topic to talk and cover this week, so let's, uh, let's hook into that one. Let's hook into it. Yes, Chris, uh, I, th I think we, we've got the, the footy boots on and kicking to the wrong end of the ground uh, because before we mention and go into the topic today, we have to mention uh, our, our wonderful partner, Nathan, at Hammeroo. Oh, from Hammeroo. How can we forget that? I don't know. It just flows off the tongue, but um, it does. We, we must have tongue tied. Yeah, Mark's really thrown us through a bit of a loop, hasn't he? He definitely has. So Yeah, yep. Yeah. One of our good yep. partners in crime is uh, Nathan up in Brisbane. He's uh, he's come on board last year, and uh, we're looking forward to being able to offer our audience maybe some incentives to go and purchase from his store, which is uh, pretty bloody good. Yep, yep. Jump onto his website and buy him out. That's what he wants. He told That's me right. yesterday. Yep. Anyway, let's get on to the, uh, the main subject. The topic at hand. Let's talk yeah. about it. And it's... Um, it's timber. You, you you seem to think that it's uh, getting scarce. Yes, mate. It's um. There's been a lot of talk, especially like um, talkback radio. In, in when I listened to Three AW in Melbourne, which is the biggest network, and uh, people were called in discussing exactly that fact because uh, you know the COVID um, period we had was uh, something that had a big uh, you know sort of flow on effect on, on a lot of different markets and a lot of different um, economic factors. Uh, so as we all know, supply and demand is, you know, is one thing. And um, 
Yeah, so well, I was sort of thinking along the lines, Chris, you know, like us being a little bit involved in woodworking and um, having some idea of, you know, when we purchase things and how much they cost us uh, compared to what they cost us maybe 12 months prior to COVID. So um, it, it's it's interesting because, you know, you, you don't expect that. I, I mean, CPI is every year, it's in, in, inevitable, but, uh, you know, when things start to just go through the roof, it, it becomes something of a uh, of a time where you're going, well, do I panic? Do I buy more? Or, you know, I don't know. What, what's your thoughts on this? I um, I heard uh, on the grapevine, actually not the grapevine, I heard from uh, one of the makers in uh, the United States, they're having the same problem over there. Um, the reason uh, everything's going through, but this, you got uh, supply and demand, obviously, and they reckon because everybody's been in lockdown, um, people have started doing, you know, projects around the house, renovating around the house. So they need timber, they need screws, they need nails. So uh, a lot of it's been um, been flying off the shelves, you know, because people have been, uh, instead of going into the store, they've been having this stuff delivered. And, um, and I think that's the problem here as well. We were locked down for 120-odd days, wasn't it, uh, at one stage? And... Um, and I know in that time uh, I beat Amazon almost to death. I was getting packages almost daily from there. Um, I did – there was uh, – Bunnings actually allowed pickups um, at the, the local store here, but you had to – you almost had to wear a radiation suit to get out of the car. It was that bad. And um, – but, yeah, the the, the timber was, um, was the big thing. It was apparently um, – they were they – were, uh, they were waiting on deliveries they couldn't get them because um, the demand was just so high. Uh, but I also heard um, Melamine, uh, one of the mills, had um, had burnt down and it was the, the mill that produced the Melamine sheets or the chipboard sheets and they, they couldn't produce that. So apparently Melamine is in short supply at the moment. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, – I, I sort of heard along those lines as well, mate. Um, yeah, look, identifying back to, say, uh, international costs and that, I, I, I did hear that also. And, I, I, look, I, I think when you're um, when you live in an economy that relies heavily on imports, um, you, you're going to strike uh, some issues with hardware and things like that. But as far as the, uh, you know, the, the timbers and that, they, we, we generally uh, have them made here in Australia. And, um, yeah... As you mentioned, mate, that that you know, people people really did get stuck into DIY activities in that you know whatever. Probably most of last year because it was sort of uh, heavily emphasised that you know uh, you, you were still able to get things, and there was a lot of TV being watched on uh, renovation shows in particular, and, and you know people people had the opportunity to uh, fulfil some of the projects that they've been putting off for a long time. Um, and, and learning skills and, you know, and as we know, when you're learning, you, you probably buy more material than you need. And um, <laughs> so, yeah, it sort of led on to a little bit of a shortage in that front. But, um, and, <coughs> excuse me, the, uh, I, I think also structural materials for the building industry uh, are sort of suffering a little bit at the outcome of uh, all of this activity, you know, and as, as you know, the production is probably less than it was, so it's it's a bit of a minefield, isn't it? When you look at it. Oh uh, yeah, Dirk. I um I got my uh, ply. I get my plywood from um, uh, Upton's, and uh, and I had the the opportunity to because uh, as you know, I'm redoing my workshop, and I've just bought seventeen sheets of the stuff. Um, but I was talking to him about um, actually that problem, the uh, the supply and demand problem, and then. then and they were the ones that told me about the melamine shortage. They still had a pack there, but they don't know when they're going to get their next uh, allotment of it. And um, and they were talking uh, months instead of weeks. Mm. And uh, so that's that's probably going to be a big problem for the, um, I guess, the cabinet makers, the kitchen makers, all those. But unless they've got a like a, a big supply on hand, um, I think they're going to be in a, in a spot of bother. Um, they 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 really couldn't tell me when when they're going to get their next uh, shipment of uh, of melamine. So now I, I don't. 
I don't use it anymore because I don't make the uh, cabinets for people anymore, but um, that could be a big problem. Oh, for sure. It's, uh, oh, it's uh, you know, people people do tend to use melamine a lot in uh, modern day builds or renovations. Uh, and yeah, whilst that's one product range, um, you know, it's interesting to, to note that um, a supplier such as Upton's, which I, uh, I think I've been there as well, um, they, they tend to always have uh, a lot of stock on hand, or as you said, it'd be uh, you know quick turnaround time to get it to you. Um, but you know, look, um, I, I heard too on the Great White. I don't know if it was you who told me this or somebody else that uh, regional settings are not getting deliveries of uh, certain items because I think the Melbourne stores are getting uh, accessibility to it first. So. You know, that, that's, that's quite a bit of a dramatic situation. And I, I've noticed, because I, I like to use the, um, uh, you know, the pre-manufactured boards, hard boards that you get at uh, the hardware, mainly, namely Bunnings, because they're the only ones that sort of hold them. Uh, you know, even the, the, a few of the selections of timbers that haven't been seen for months now. Look, I, I use that word, uh, Kari, uh, K-A-R-I, W-A. Yeah, I know the one, yep. Yeah, and, and it's, a, it's a beautiful timber to work with, you know. And um, when, when you sort of, you, you always put your hope, oh, I'll just go and grab some more because it's um, available. And, you know, and all of a sudden you ask the staff, where's this? And they say, we haven't had it in for a while and we may not get it back in at all. You know, and that's, that's, that's disheartening, not, not being a greedy person. I'm just saying it's disheartening to not be able to, you know, because I have to travel a fair way to get my, my wood. So if I'm doing a one-hour turnaround trip and, you know, they got bugger all there. I'm, I'm sort of thinking, eh, that's, uh, that's a bit harsh. <laughs> it is. It is. No, you're right. And uh, I've got I've got a Bunnings um, about 10 minutes down the road from me, so uh, it's not as great a turnaround time as what you've got. But um, I have noticed uh, in the timber section there's a lot of empty shelves um, at the moment. Yeah. Um, and I can't, it's just going back to uh, the melamine situation, I can't help but think that um, if there is a shortage, you know, like the cabinet makers and the kitchen makers and everything, what's going to happen to their businesses, you know, if they, if they can't supply um, the, the kitchen cabinets or the, um, you know, the, the walk-in robes or whatever, what have you, uh, if they can't get their hands on any melamine, you know, that's, that's that, I reckon that's, that's a significant problem. And, and as we're talking about it, it's uh, the, the structural materials for building and framing and, you know, um, to build a home is uh, also in short supply to a degree. Where, mm. So, you know, somebody is waiting to get the frame up and then, um, you know, then we go through the whole heap of trades to get up to a certain standard and cabinetry, you know. So it's, it's filtering on throughout the, the that supply chain to... Uh, on the ground, and that it, all, it goes all the way back, doesn't it? It sort of, and you know, it affects different industries in different ways. And so, yeah, what what, what do you think is a solution as far as you know, like COVID will go away, um, and long term sort of, uh, I don't know, manufacturing and things like that. Do we look at say composite type materials, or um, I've been hearing about some other things now that people are you know are using. Uh, hay, hay to do um, some, you know, in some process to building, whether it's insulation or flooring, but it's there's a lot of clever things coming around. So is it going to be sustainable in the future for us to get access to what we knew as a timber source that we could go and buy yesterday? Uh, I was just thinking, how am I going to cut hay on my table saw? That's, that's going to be a bit of a hairy thing, but... Um... I, I remember um, years and years and years ago. I, I used to do um, security, and uh, one of the one of the places that I vin visited was called uh, Unimold, and they made um, sheets of um, uh, plastic, um, like like twelve hundred by twenty four hundred sheets of, of plastic, uh, eighteen mil thick, you know, and it, it cut. Um, okay, you could use them on table saws. You can use them on um, your hand tools with them. It was beautiful stuff, and and they they made it in a variety of colours. And they were being recycled out of um, old, um, you know, the rubbish bins that we have, those bins, and and all sorts of other plastic. 
and I thought, and, and just thinking about it, I'm, I'm not even sure that they're still around. So um, maybe that could be an option, you know, if, if, if somebody wanted to, um, uh, you know, start up a business to do that again. Uh, you know, produce that 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 sort of um, uh, plastic. You know, because they had they had everything. They had, like I said, the twelve hundred by twenty four hundred sheets in eighteen mil. Um, they had the four by four posts as well. So you could. And the thing is, if you if you're going to use it for stuff outside, it'll never rot because mm. it's plastic. You know, so I'm not even sure. Maybe if one of our listeners would um, would let me know if that stuff is still available, I'd be um, I'd be certainly looking into it. You know, to, to Maybe uh, instead of using uh, plywood all the time, I could use this stuff, you know? Yeah, look, um, when you're talking about that, I, I was thinking about, I, I would be happy to go with a sustainable um, resource, you know, which was recycled perhaps. But to me, I, I would like it to look a little bit like timber and have that sort of feel about it. And also, look, I've heard that, you know, composite-type decking and that, that, that it wears pretty heavily on your on, on your blades, on your tools and saws and that. So, you know, th there's always some clever genius uh, trying to come up with a, a solution to the future, which you know we, we do need. And um, but it's lovely to have a nice slab of wood that's been you know worked and it, it's a centerpiece of your home, or you know just provides that ambient feel to or rusticity, whatever you want to call it. But you know you you can make that yourself. Um, so how do, you, how do you see, like, introducing well, something that's made from space-age materials or recycled materials to replace the authentic? No, no don't, don't get me wrong. Um, a nice slab of timber will, will never go out of style, never go out of fashion. Um, I'm, I'm thinking more along the lines of um, uh, just if I wanted to do, say for instance, I wanted to make a, a, a letterbox for my front yard, and I made it all out of this plastic stuff. I mean, that would still be there when I'm dusting the ground, you know. Um, but the other, the, you're talking about these composite materials. I mean, you look at some of the decking um, composite uh, material. That is so expensive. It's it's really prohibitive, and um, and I I can't I can't see that um, taking off. You know, if you can get like a the, the pine decking is is cheap as chips. Yeah, you can you buy that by the, the yard. And um, and the the merbu is is expensive, but it's nowhere near what this composite material is, and um, and like you said before, it's it's harder on your tools because you've got a little bit of everything mixed into it, but it'll it'll never rot. I don't think you ever have to paint it or anything like that, um, and it'll last for a very very long time. So you you offset that cost of um, of not having to paint it um, or the maintenance of it over the niceness or the warmth that uh, the timber can give you. Uh, yeah, and that, that, I mean, you can argue the point nowadays, you, you, you use a select grade uh, plywood, so a marine grade, which is costly, but, you know, over over the journey. It's 120 bucks a sheet. Yeah, but when it's sealed, you know, it, it's, it'll last you for a lot longer than, say, a, a, a pine or a, a lower class, lower grading type plywood which you know you probably have to do a bit of extra work to get it up to that sort of uh, quality as the marine ply you know it's um mm. so the time factor that goes into working with the material you have um i think that's to be considered as well but you know like uh, time everything changes in the world and as the population gets bigger the demand on natural resources is uh make t probably going to take its toll so recycling i think is uh, a big key uh, for the future and you know we had mark dana on on the show and he he's all for that that's his that's his um thing you know so he's his bread know, and butter and, yeah yeah and i know there's people out there who, who are in business selling recycled products and you know it's, it's gold at the moment sort of thing yeah and it, look we would like to see you mentioned mark dana before um we we all know that um the timber is becoming a little bit harder to source now, but does that mean later on the pallets are going to be, instead of getting them for free, you're going to have to start buying pallets, you know? I mean, is it going to get to that point? You know, we I can drive around my local industrial area and pick up enough pallets to build a house out of, mm -hmm. um, 
But later on down the line, uh, is it going to be where they're going to start locking away their pallets because they're just going to become um, too valuable, you know, to, to, to just give away? Fair point. Fair point, Chris. I, I I wouldn't like to see that day coming, you know. I mean, we're, we're, we're just putting it out there and um, <laughs> it's not trying to put fear into people's minds to say, oh, you know, this is the end for timber. But um, no. it's, it's a point of discussion because I think a, as you see the side effects of, you know, what's happening, um, there's always a rebound as well. So, you know, it's that's one of the good things of uh, how we structure our societies to think a little bit outside the, the square, then bounce back and say, all right, we'll, we'll try a different tactic. I think, um, yeah, I think at the moment we're just going through a little bit of pain, but I, um, like you said, I think it'll recover. Um, I mean, I don't want to be, you know, come across as a doomsayer here, but uh, I'd like to think that, um, I mean, trees are always going to grow and we're always going to have the, you know, that, that resource available. Um, but, you know, it, it's... I reckon it's good to, to look at other options as well. Like I said, you know, the, that plastic that, um, I mean, you can't use it for everything. You can't make a piece of fine furniture out of an old rubbish bin. But, um, you know, it's but it's it's an option to look at, you know. Um, and, I, and from memory, I think that uh, that sheet of uh, plastic was um, was comparable in price to an actual sheet of plywood. And yeah. uh, but I, I thought it was it was brilliant, and it, it, uh, they they actually gave me some offcuts of this stuff so I could try, and uh, it, it cut easier than plywood, and um, it didn't it didn't melt it didn't. But if you wanted to to actually um, seal the the because I did make a letterbox out of it. If you wanted to to make a letterbox that, that didn't leak, you just used an old um, um, what are they called the soldering iron. And you welded it together instead of nailed and screwed it. You know, you, you could still do that, but if you welded it uh, closed, it was watertight. Um, yeah. But anyway, I, I, I digress. I um, I really think that um, the, the timber will make a, a comeback. It'll it'll bounce back once they fix this mill up in uh, wherever it is that does does the melamine. I think um, they're going to go into overdrive and uh, start producing melamine sheets again. And I think the reason, you know, melamine's so good for all these companies is because it's such a cheap material. Um, and uh, I think the plywoods, I I haven't seen any uh, shortage in plywoods, thankfully. I've uh, I've steadily bought, even through the entire COVID period, I, I've bought plywood. Um, so I, I, I don't know. It's just at the moment or at the moment it just seems that um, some of the timber's been – uh, a little bit harder to get, like that Kari stuff that you're talking about. Yeah. Even I've noticed that uh, where I get mine from, there's a lot less to choose from. Yeah. Yep, that's a sign of the times, but um, as, as we mentioned, Chris, it's it's not doomsday. <laughs> and we will get the, uh, the viewers and listeners to perhaps give us some feedback on their interpretation of how they're seeing it at the moment. So... I, I think it's a. It's interesting to have this conversation, mate. Hey, oh, look, I, I don't think um, people are laying awake at night, Dirk, and uh, worrying about where they're going to get their um, next board from. But um, and I'd hate to think that it'll that'll it'll get to that. But uh, yeah, I, I don't think we should uh, worry too much about it. But um, anyway, look, that's that's the topic for the day. Um, I. Uh, like you said, if, if people have uh, something they want to add to it, you know, just leave a comment down below. Um, Dirk always responds to everything. Um, he's he's the secretary in this uh, in this partnership. Uh, there you go. And um, and I think we should um, maybe close this episode and uh, maybe talk about what we're going to do next week. Sounds like a good idea, Chris. Yeah, so interesting thing to talk about today, Chris. As we mentioned, it's not to be, you know, despairing about, you know, get out, do you get it before it's gone? But um, just think about, well, you know, why you might have a shortage in your shop and uh, there's probably that reason for it. But, Chris, um, people might be going, you guys are together again and we're doing this over the internet. And um, I think the reason is was uh, something to do with BO. We were sort of... Accusing each other who had it, but no one could really hold their hand. Did up. you um, did you get that um, bottle of deodorant I sent you? Uh, yeah, yeah. 
good, good. It smells like petrol. So I reckon. So I reckon. Um, yeah, there's. You, you get it to work by using a match. Ah, I'll give that a yeah. go after. Oh, yeah. 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 Let me know how you go. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> if it doesn't work out, maybe we can introduce then uh, what we might be doing next week. Yeah. Um, I think the topic we're going to talk about next week, Dirk is uh, your projects. Now, we've, we've had this talk between you and me before, um, and I think we should throw it across the forum to, uh, to our listeners. The projects, do you, do you make stuff um, out of necessity or do you just do it for the fun of it? Oh, that's interesting. Um, I'd have to think about that, Chris, because uh, that might be a long answer, I think. Uh, mm. Yeah, I'm swinging on the fence trying to think about it now. I'll, uh, I'll give you an answer next week, mate. Is it a fence you put up because you don't want to swing too hard? It is a fence I put up. It's um, reinforced by the neighbour who's um, good enough to... Uh, she doesn't know anything about fences, but she knows more than me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think that's that'll be an interest, interesting topic for next week. Um you know, the projects in your workshop, if you're out in your workshop and you just stand there and go, I might make one of these. Or do you, are you the one, the sort of blokes says, oh, my, my uh, cousin from my wife's family twice removed has just asked me to make him a thing of a bob. I've got to go there and do that. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it sounds, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, a little bit of a roundabout way of getting there. But uh, look, I, I normally... I. I don't like to make things for customers anymore because I just I hate dealing with the public. Um, so if if uh, a family friend or um, a family member asks me for something, then I'm happy to uh, comply. But other than that, I'm only doing stuff just for the hell of it. You know, I enjoy being out in the workshop, making my jigs, uh, making you know things to help myself, that sort of thing. So, but anyway, we won't talk about it now, Dirk. Otherwise, I won't listen next week. Do right, mate. Um, Chris, we'd just like to ask everyone. We also thank you, everyone who's been part of this uh, podcast and YouTube channel along the journey, and we're trying to build it up. So, if you first time here, please think about subscribing to us, uh, and you know, putting your input into the comments, and also maybe sharing around to your mates who might find us interesting, um, or, or the people we have on the show interesting. So that's something. Uh, yeah, we'd just like to. Um, Ask people just to... just quickly, Dirk. Yeah, have you mentioned um, Nath at Hamaru? I don't know. I don't know. How could you? How could one forget about the wonderful online? I don't store? know. No. So, no, Chris, I, I don't know. <laughs> Nathan is a partner of ours. He's he uh, he owns Hamaru, and uh, we'll put links every week. And if we get more people to be partners to the show, there'll always be a link. To their business, it's just to help small business out, and, and in return, we ask that they offer something up for our audience to be able to, you know, perhaps get a little bit of a win on a discount. As we said, yeah. timber prices going up, you might get some cheaper finish. Might be a win yep. for everyone. So, I, I agree. Think that, I think we've done all right this week again, mate. I think we have. Um, so, just just quickly, you, you're saying that um, Nathan from Hamaru. Isn't going to send me uh, four litres of Osmo for nothing? Um, no, no, I don't think so because I, I got a delivery of it and I don't know how that happened, but, uh, yeah, so I, I can I can give you a little bit, a sample if you want. So you got my free sample? No, 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 and that was addressed to me. I, I just oh. rubbed out the Zurich part on the tin, but... No. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna have to give Nathan a call. I think he buggered up, but anyway, no. anyway. If you want something, he said, look, he sells uh, all your finishes, all your resins, all your uh, uh, your resin colorings and everything. If you want anything, jump on his website, buy him out. He'd love that. That's right. Exactly right. Quality Australian service you'll get. Yes, one hundred percent. Anyway, Dirk, I reckon we you um, should shut up now and. Um, let the listeners go to sleep. So what do you reckon? Good idea, mate. So until next week, everyone, thank you for watching and thank you for listening. And I'll, uh, I'll say hooroo. And I'm going to say bye for now.
Yeah, good day, Dirk. <laughs> <laughs> I can do that better. Hang on a sec. Oh, things. What are we talking about? <laughs> I knew you were going to fluff that one. <laughs>